Hey what's up guys, it's Hetz Hetz Modern Warfare here, Gamertab Banjo Chicken and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to bypass internet filters um, at your school or work or college computer systems. Uh, this tutorial has been requested on the comment section of my tutorial on how to access admin accounts at work, college and school. Um, you can change your own account to administrator or access the administrator accounts themselves. Um, I'll put a link to that video in the description. But people there were wanting that, or requesting a tutorial for how to bypass uh, blocked sites at school, which are internet filters that, you know, maybe social media sites, um, sites like YouTube and stuff that will be blocked. Um, my college don't actually block many websites. They do have an internet filter, but they don't block many websites. Whereas um, my uh, school, the school I used to go to, um, they practically blocked almost every website you could think of, uh, which is ridiculous. Uh, but this tutorial will hopefully show you guys how to bypass that. And uh, another thing, um, I have been offline for a month, so apologies for that. Um, I am getting a, sh a hell of a lot of Skype messages and stuff. Um, I can't reply to many of them at the moment, there's just too many, but um, it's because I've been offline for a month and that was due to switching broadband providers or internet service provider um, and upgrading to fibre to the cabinet and it kept getting delayed, so apologies for that. But uh, back online now and hopefully I can bring you guys some more tutorials. So what we're going to do, um, I've actually installed a basic um, internet filter on my home system here just to give you an example so if you go to YouTube uh, it gets blocked now obviously your school or college network will have a you know a more expensive uh, paid for uh, internet filter like WebSense or something like that um, but just for the example I've just got this little one on here now it basically says you know access to the website's blocked you can go back to the previous um, page but um, nope you're not getting access to YouTube so to bypass stuff like this um, there are multiple different ways techniques the way that worked for me is using something called the Tor browser now before anybody clicks off and says oh I've already tried to use Tor and it doesn't work well just bear with me because we're going to be editing some settings in Tor to hopefully make it work around your uh, yeah, basically work around your schools security or colleges security um, so first of all if you're able to get onto the Tor website which is torproject.org if you're able to get onto this website then great um, go ahead click download Tor download Tor bundle um, browser bundle uh, if you're able to download at your school or whatever, that would be good as well. But if you can't, if they've blocked downloading or they've blocked the website to download Tor, um, they've blocked this website, torproject.org, um, then what you can do at home, when you're at home, when you're on your home system, which isn't uh, restricted, uh, go to this website, download it, stick the installer on a USB drive, um, which I've done here. As you can see, I've got... Um, my USB drive here and I've downloaded the Tor installer and I've put it in my USB drive so I just take that USB drive to your school and um, go ahead and install it once you get to school now I'm gonna go ahead and install it just now so let's just pretend that I am now on my uh, college computer and I want to go and bypass their internet filter access YouTube so I'm just gonna click OK now the good thing about this browser is uh, well the Tor browser is basically designed uh, to bypass all this kind of stuff web, web filters and firewalls um, a lot of countries where their governments block their web like block a lot of websites um, a lot of people in those countries use the Tor browser to gain access to um, the internet um, and access those websites that are blocked so um, it is a good browser for this uh, purpose so what we're going to do is install it now like I say because you're a standard user a lot of programs will not allow you to install uh, their software 
as a standard user but Tor luckily does allow you to install it as a standard user. If you're getting problems installing it as a standard user then watch my tutorial on how to get admin and um, get administrator first and then um, try and install it but um, it should definitely work on a standard user account so don't worry about that. Just don't install it to the hard drive. Don't install it to the internal hard drive because one the hard drive might have write access denied for standard users so you can't install anything to the hard drive. Um, another thing is the hard drive is the school or college's property. It's their property. If you install the program to their property and you get caught using it um, you might get in trouble for that maybe if they're bitchy about it I don't know but um, if you install it to your flash drive that's you know your storage device belongs to you so um, hopefully you wouldn't get uh, in too much shit for it so I'm going to click on browse I'm going to go to computer uh, and it's changed the install path to install it to my USB stick instead alright so it's installed now so I'm just going to click finish and make sure the box is ticked to run the Tor browser bundle um, so just go ahead and wait for this to launch. So we've got this Tor uh, network settings popping up here. Now you've got two options. You can directly connect. Uh, I'd recommend you try that first just in case the um, sort of network security on your school or college network is really terrible. Um, then you could probably click connect and it might just go ahead and connect. Um, if it does work, it'll bring up a new browser window that'll say congratulations Tor is up and running or something like that or is fully installed and working um, and you'll be able to just use that browser to access any sites that you want um, whereas with uh, most networks uh, school networks college networks they'll have firewalls they'll have um, you know network sensors ship and all that crap proxy they may even have proxy um, networks configured as well so in which case you'd click configure um, which says you know this computer's internet connection is censored filtered or proxied so I'm gonna click on configure and that's only if that one didn't work if you click connect and it works then great that's fine if you click connect and the little loading bar when it's sort of setting stuff up it'll open another little window with a green loading bar now if the loading bar only reaches maybe a quarter of the way along and it just hangs and just doesn't go any further um, or at any point along that bar it just freezes and it won't move any further then you're gonna have to configure it so click this option to configure it's gonna say does this computer need to use a proxy to access the internet now you might be surprised but a lot of school networks and college networks they do actually use proxy servers um, to connect it is better security for them to use a proxy server so um, to tell if they are using one or not you'll just go onto your normal internet browser um, at your school or college whether it's Google Chrome or Internet Explorer uh, if it's in if it's Internet Explorer that you use then go to tools then internet options uh, with Google Chrome you click on this um, button on the top right and you go down to settings scroll down to show advanced settings um, and then you want to click on change proxy settings and then you get this internet properties box should look the same as this for all browsers um, click on well actually I haven't actually checked Firefox to be honest but I assume it would be the same click on uh, LAN settings and in here you've got uh, your proxy settings now if this box is ticked and you see something similar to this in the address um, and you see a port then that means uh, that it is using a proxy if it's, if it's an IP address in here as well it also means it will be using a proxy to connect to the internet so in this case you want to say yes it is using a proxy to access the internet you're going to copy the um, domain the host name you're going to paste it in here copy the port and paste it in here as well 
and then you're going to select the proxy type. Now this really sort of depends on the port. If the port is 443 like this one, then you're going to select HTTP slash HTTPS. If it's port 8080, um, if it's port 8080, which it was at my college, um, and you're also going to select HTTP slash HTTPS. Um, if it's a different port, then try SOX4 or SOX5, or try both. Try first SOX4 if that doesn't work. Um, when you get to the connection stage, if that doesn't work, then go back and try SOX5. Um, so once you have the correct information inputted, uh, you can go ahead and click Next. Uh, you can even, if you have access to the command prompt, you don't have to do this, but just saying, if you have access to the command prompt, uh, you can find the IP address of the host name by typing in ping and then pasting in the host name and pressing enter. That will uh, ping the host name to get the IP address. And I think the server is down at the moment for that particular, this particular server here. Uh, so it's timing out, but uh, it should get replies uh, when you do it with your one. So you can just mark that and use the address instead. So you can use the actual IP address like that, or you can use the initial host name, whichever, both should work. And then you're gonna click next. It's gonna say, does this computer's internet connection go through a firewall that only allows certain ports? Now, I would say yes to this as well, even if you don't know, because it is most likely that they have got certain ports that are blocked on their firewall. So by default, it's got port 80 and 443 entered in here because those are ports that need to be open for you to get an internet connection. So what a good idea to do is find the port that's that was in your proxy server and add that into the firewall because if it's using something like this, if it's using port 8080 to reach the internet, then that port's obviously not blocked. So whatever port was in here on your your proxy settings, that port must be unblocked. So add it in to the list by separating it with a comma. So we say port 8080 is also uh, unblocked. Click next and then just click connect. I'm not sure about this whole relays thing. I've never had to use that. So just click connect and it should now connect you. If it doesn't, then like I say, go back to here and try a different um, proxy type and just double check the information is correct. And obviously because I'm not at my college, I'm not using a proxy server, I can directly connect to it. So this might take a while, give it a second. Okay, and once it's done doing its configuring and set up, you should end up with a screen that looks like this, where it says, congratulations, the browser is configured to use Tor. Now, what you can, now you just have to use this. That's all you have to do. Whenever you want to access a website that is blocked, you use this browser. So if you go back to your USB stick, um, you can click on Tor browser. You've got start Tor browser, or if you go into browser, there's this Firefox application. You can create a desktop shortcut of that if you want to be able to quick launch it, or a desktop shortcut of this. Um, or you can just go to your USB drive and double click it to run it whenever you want to access your blocked sites and it'll open up this browser. Now, if we go back to your normal browser, everything on here is still gonna be blocked. So if I go to YouTube, it's still blocked by this uh, internet filter, but because the Tor browser uses proxy servers to access the internet, if I do the same thing on here and go to youtube.com, I have to put in the www. It is going to take longer to connect because it is connecting through these proxy servers, but in the long run, it is going to give you access. As you can see, I've got access to YouTube here, uh, whereas on this browser, I have been denied access. So that is basically how you access block sites. And if you go to whatismyip.com on the 
on your normal internet browser first of all as you can see it comes up much quicker because it's not using the proxy obviously it's using the it is using the proxy a proxy it's using the school's proxy um, but it gives a different IP address to this one because the Tor is using the a proxy server in another country to connect um, or it might be another country let's have a look yep so completely different um, country completely different internet service provider and a completely different IP address so that is it guys that is how um, you can bypass block sites at school um, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, the only problem with the Tor browser is the goddamn amount of ads that pop up on here um, but you can access any website um, that you want pretty much so thanks for watching if you liked the video don't forget to leave a like um, comment if you have any questions subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I will hopefully see you guys in my next video